What the hell is up, Remedy Speakeasy? Hey, you guys ready for some open mic comedy tonight? Yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. My name's Chanel. I'm going to be your uh, host for tonight. Uh, but before we start, I'm going to go over a couple rules. Um, make sure you keep your table talk to a minimum. Uh, you don't want to distract any of the comedians. Speaking of that, um, don't heckle any of the comedians. We try really hard to make you guys laugh. I know, I know, I'm sorry. But uh, last rule, just make sure you guys have a good time. If you find something funny, go ahead and laugh at it, you know? Uh, yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, that being said, let's get this show on the road. Yay. You guys like my costume? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell what I am. I am uh, none of your business. Yeah. I really gotta make sure I keep the briefcase with me or else I'm just a holy cow. I know, I know. Uh, like I said, my name is Janelle and I freaking hate my name so much, dude. Uh, all my siblings, they got their name from uh, the Bible. And I'm still trying to figure out if I got my name from Jerry Springer or 16 and Pregnant. <laughs> Like, even the way you spell my name is problematic. Like, I am one letter away from anal. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and if you time it right, one drink away. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're coming to the end of October, but I'm not sure if you guys knew this. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yeah, yeah man. The only reason I know is because I've been wearing less concealer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry. My husband wouldn't hurt a fly. Unless that fly got lippy and didn't know her place. <laughs> I, am a, I am Hispanic. I am a Latina. And whenever anyone figures that out, they say some weird stuff like, uh, don't get Janelle mad. She's going to key your car. Which is kind of racist, because like, I don't know anything about keys. I'm not Colombian. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Mexican. If you piss me off, I'm just going to take the starter out of your car. <laughs> and the catalytic converter. <laughs> oh, Janelle, why stop there? Why don't you just steal the car? Because I'm not Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh, man, I sh <laughs> Topical. I should have brought like a ruler or something, you know? You guys ever get spanked before? Woo! <laughs> wow. I I've never been spanked. Both my parents worked, so. Yeah, my grandma took care of us, and my mom, she was really weird. She gave my grandma permission to hit us, and she said, F that, I'm going the psychological route. So every time we got in trouble, she used to make us wash all the walls in the house for hours. An eight-year-old me would just be washing walls, being so mad, like, man, I hate my grandma so much, dude. I wish one day there was a president that would just make this wall so big and put my grandma on the other side of it, dude! <laughs> And I think I accidentally manifested Trump, so, yeah. Uh, along with being Mexican, I'm also, uh, I'm in the Navy right now, and uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, Janelle, you're too fat to be in the Navy, and you're wrong. I'm too fat to get in the Navy. But that's not the point. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that I got some tea. I got some hot goss. You guys want to hear some Navy tea? Yeah. Oh yeah, man, this happened on Monday. Uh, someone got caught in the duty van masturbating. I just like to call it carjacking though. Yeah, because it's less embarrassing for me. So, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. They got heated seats, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Oh, man, I'm a little nervous though right now. I'm anxious. Um, my husband's out of town right now, and when he's out of town, I just it's hard for me to sleep at night. So I've been sleeping with a gun. Yeah, and uh, this morning I really didn't want to wake up for work, and I almost hit the wrong snooze button. Oh no! Yeah. Oh yeah. The last time I told a gun joke though, someone actually pulled out a revolver. Yeah, and before I could say anything to him, he's like, relax, it's fake. And I'm like, that's cool. <sighs> what a coincidence. So is the poop in my pants. <laughs> yeah, dude, I am always packing. I feel like uh, guns are a lot like black men, if you think about it. You know, 
People are afraid of them for no reason. You know, white guys think they're cool. When my husband's out of town, they're gonna end up in my bed. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, how are you guys feeling? You guys feeling good? All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? Keep putting your hands together for your first comedian, Thomas Friday. Uh, Janelle's not a nun, she's a moor. <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, confess some things. <laughs> this is going to be all a confession. Uh, I uh, jaywalked the other day. <laughs> and I'm not ready to tell my story. Uh, <laughs> But I am a square because I follow all the rules. Like I once used hand soap to wash my body and it felt dirty. And I just follow all the rules. Like I never speed. I use my blinkers and I never park in handicap spots. And that's just in Grand Theft Auto. So you can imagine me in real life. Uh, another confession. Uh, I, <laughs> I guess I don't have another confession. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Just trying to work on new stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I took a girl to get an IUD. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's my confession. <laughs> I took her first thing in the morning, so I, like I was barely dressed. I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, sweatpants, and flip-flops, and my hair was really messed up. And then when the doctor came out, they looked at the girl, then looked at me, and then they looked back to the girl and said, you're making the right decision here. <laughs> Which was a little bit insulting, so I walked across the street and started protesting. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> um, trying to stay on the sister's good side here. Uh, <laughs> you guys remember anti-maskers during the pandemic? What did they do during Halloween? Like... If someone came up dressed like Michael Myers, but without a mask, they just look like a car mechanic. <laughs> Halloween. I'm trying to think. I like, uh, I don't have any jokes about Halloween. Uh, I like when people dress as natives during Halloween. Because uh, <laughs> it reminds me of home. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> How am I going to say this? Oh, you know, I'm 75% native and 25% white. Um, so my rain dances, because of my white side, are not that good. Uh, so, when I do it, the most I can do is make it overcast. <laughs> Someone asked me what the widest thing I did was, and I just joked around and I said, uh, I went to a Klan's rally. Because <laughs> as a native, their hoods look like teepees. <laughs> I'm uh, part of this clan called the Raven Clan, and I dated a girl. She was white, uh, because, and then she's also not a family member that way. Because like this is why we have clans, so you don't accidentally date a family member. So like I'm Raven Clan. I could only date someone in the Eagle Clan within my tribe, but the girl I was dating wasn't either. So she was part of the Ku Klux Klan, and. <laughs> All right. 
Got my native clan material out of the way here. <laughs> um, oh, I also, I found out, like I was doing research about my tribe because I'm trying to learn more because I'm very Americanized. But during my research, I found out that my tribe was actually slavers, which is not good because my white side is also slavers. <laughs> and like, is that like part of my bloodline now? Like, because it makes sense because I'm a car salesman and I've definitely sold a few Cherokees. Um, <laughs> And they were grand. Uh, <laughs> I want my Land Cruiser back. <laughs> I like being in a car salesman uh, because everyone automatically hates you. I heard someone introduce themselves to me as fuck you, um, which sounds uh, Asian? <laughs> no. But uh, I worked at this one dealership, and my manager there, he was so oblivious, so we had a giant truck pull up, and on the back of this truck, I had a bunch of stickers that said, I love bears. Bears are the best. So my manager proceeded to talk to him about the animal bears for like 45 minutes, because he didn't know what the rainbows meant. And... <laughs> It just got me thinking, like, my man's just so oblivious. Like, what other gay terms does he not know? Like, if a sticker that said, I love otters came up, which is another gay term I learned while doing research for this joke. <laughs> or if one sticker came up and it said, I like to get fucked in the ass. And then he'd be like, well, you came to the right dealership. That's what we do to our customers. <laughs> We don't do that. Um, <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> One more time for Thomas Friday, you guys. Yeah, holy crap, that was good. All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? All right, come to the stage, my brother in Christ, Jacob Jaffe. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Why is there a briefcase here? Uh, your business. <laughs> now I'm especially worried. Like, I grew up in the post-9-11 America, like... We, like, see something, say something, you know? Uh, okay, here I am talking right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's an election year. Uh, 2001 was pretty, was pretty exciting, I guess. I keep thinking about that. That's not a bomb, is it? No, it's not a bomb. Okay, cool. See, if you ask someone if, it's, if something's a bomb and they say no, they're probably telling the truth. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so every, every election year, people talk about how, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to move to Canada or something or, like, another country if, the, if whoever gets elected. And, like, most of the time, nobody ever does it. Uh, the weird thing, though, is that in 1930, my great-grandparents actually did do that. Uh, there was a pretty big election in Germany, and, well, uh, yeah, so they, they ended up moving. Yeah, and just imagine, like, if they just waited two years, think, think like, their, their neighbors probably thought they were fucking idiots for moving because if they just waited two more years, then Hindenburg would have died. <laughs> Guys, it, it's a Hitler joke. Okay, cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, now they, now they actually, uh, uh, my family's actually Jewish, so good thing, uh, good thing that they, that they moved when he was the chancellor. Uh, yeah. Now it's actually kind of funny, like, uh, yeah, oddly enough, they, they moved to Germany. My great-grandparents, who were born in Russia, they moved to Germany because of the civil war in Russia. Uh, a lot of Russians just didn't like Jewish people because they were like storekeepers or like uh, shop managers and stuff like that, and they are the enemy to the communists, I guess. 
which is kind of weird because that's like the only thing that Jewish people could do in Russia at the time. Uh, yeah, now it's now it's different. Uh, my dad is a storekeeper in <laughs> Portland, and uh, my grandmother is an old lady. Uh, shares the same name as uh, my significant other's great aunt. Uh, they are not the same person. I was a little bit worried one time. Someone said that we looked like we were related, and like uh, it's like, oh yeah, my great aunt Sandy, and I'm like. My grandmother's name is Sandy. <laughs> I don't remember her having siblings either. Like this is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, my my grandmother is from Brooklyn, so I was like especially worried for a minute because I'm like, what is Grandma Sandy doing in Bremerton? She's never been west of the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's a funny old lady though. My dad like grew up Jewish, my grandparents hated how religious he was because, well, you know, doing religious things costs money. They hated it for the most Jewish of reasons, you know, <laughs> which is pretty great. And then my dad stopped being so religious because, well, when my great grandfather died, they had to spend a lot of money for his funeral and he just thought that was bullshit. The most Jewish reason for uh, not being Jewish anymore. In my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't raised all that religious. Anyway, my mother is a shiksa, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. My grandmother still chides me on like some of the Jewish traditions. There was one time that we were eating kasha on Passover. You're not supposed to have bread on Passover. She called us out on it. And then the next time that we visited, she ordered the most expensive thing on the menu at the restaurant that my dad took us to, as she always does which happened to be lobster ravioli. <laughs> give a shit about Passover traditions, but you don't give a shit about not eating shellfish grandma, really? <laughs> anyway, I, I have food in the fryer right now, so I should go. <laughs> Keep it going for Jacob, you guys. All right, keep your hands clapping for your next comedian coming to the stage. She's super funny, super sweet. She's on her way over here. It's Bernadette Jaro! <laughs> what do all you tell people? I don't know. All right, so I know some of you may think I look kind of familiar. Well, that's because I'm channeling Diane Keaton tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> no, actually, if I look familiar to any of y'all, it's because I <clears throat> hang out here at Remedy a lot. <laughs> um, and <laughs> speaking of which, I can't stand up. Um, but no, to counteract all of the alcohol that I drink here at Remedy, I walk five miles a day. Yay. And, you know, I'm still an alcoholic, but I'm a healthy alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, so when I moved here in this neighborhood, a couple of blocks from here, <clears throat> I started doing my five mile routes. And a couple of the business owners were worried about this little old lady out walking the streets all day. And they were worried that I was homeless. I said, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> I live in a very overpriced shoebox <laughs> around the corner. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. So then, you know, the weather started getting warmer. I started wearing fewer clothes, just like all the rest of you. It's not like I was out there in a bikini. Last time I did that, people threw garbage at me. So, you know, I, I was just out walking, cute little sundress, and somebody walks up to me and says, are you a hooker? <laughs> and when I finished laughing, I said, uh, 
no, sir, do you know anybody who wants to get with this? <laughs> oh, I got a hand raised, yay. <laughs> but believe me, if I tried to make my living as a streetwalker, I would be homeless. <laughs> but, all right, speaking of wanting to get with this, Y'all are, are going to have to use your imagination. Think back 15, 20 years when I was still doable. You're still doable. <laughs> oh, thank you, SJ. <laughs> and Phil. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I moved to Denver to be closer to my grandkids. And get to spend more time with them. So my son was introducing me to his friends and you know that was all very nice and one of them looked at me and said, ooh, a MILF. And my son, my son started to get pissed off and I went, no, no honey, I got this. I said, <clears throat> look here young man, I will have you know I am a grandmother. Now, your MILFs are a dime a dozen. I'm a GILF. <laughs> I, I deserve the respect that goes along with that title. Don't be calling me a MILF. My son was dying over in the corner. Luckily, he was kind of moved away. And I took this young man's arm and I said, so what's your phone number, honey? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so you know, if any of y'all out there know anybody who do does want to get with this, see me after the show. All right, Phil, I'm sitting next to you. All right, thank you very much, Remedy. One more time for Bernadette, the Gilf of Bremerton. Damn, girl, you're making me want to break my vows, dude. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. All right, he is the sous chef here at Remedy Speakeasy. He is the lead singer of Rising of the Tides. Put your hands together for Rod. Thank you, sister. Nuns look suspiciously like penguins to me, and I do not... <laughs> I do not fucking like penguins, man. I think they're pretentious asshole birds who, despite the fact from being evolved from dinosaurs, never learned how to fucking fly. So how the fuck can you call yourself a fucking bird if you can't fly? Sliding around on your belly like some drunk idiot. Also, Bernadette, I love you. You just ruined like 80% of the illusions I had of a sweet old lady you were. You fucking street walking gilf, dude. I swear to fucking God. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Jesus Christ, tonight Jacob came out, and I don't know if that was a lecture or jokes. I hope he didn't burn your food. I trained that kid, and he will be punished. I got a new chair. I'm very excited about it. And the guy that gave it to me is a very dear friend of mine. And so now when I jerk off in it, I just think of Phil, you know? And, and uh, well, you know, they say do whatever feels good, you know? And, and the weird thing is, is to get the chair, all I had to do was get my meat in his mouth. Oh. What? We, we, we gave him a ribeye dinner. You people are weird. <laughs> Fucking, uh, um, I am a sous chef. People think sous is French for under, like under the chef. No, for me, it means I'm suicidal. I've been doing this for 32 years, and I don't want to be a cook anymore, but nobody else will hire me because I call my boss's names and stuff, like, <laughs> like Allison. The other day, I wore I wore a blonde wig because I was going to be a KJ for a night. I don't want to shock anybody with this face. Thought I'd make myself pretty, and I had bangs. And so I yelled out to Allison, "Hey, look, we're Bang Bros!" And <laughs> which is fun. But her family was sitting at that table that had just come here from Florida, and her mom had some questions. <laughs> she had many questions. 
We could get a van and tour the country together. Bang bros are the best bros ever. Look at our bangs. Have you ever shaved a rabbit and fucked it? I was just asking Shelby what he does up there. <laughs> He's a weird man. How come Remedies only hires people with crazy fucking laughs? SJ laughs like fucking a jet's flying overhead. Fucking Shelby sounds like a jackal if it ain't 22 hits of acid. Angie's laugh actually fucking killed a homeless person. I saw him walk by and she was like, ah! I don't laugh because I'm dead inside. I don't tell jokes. I'm just trying to get it out. And you fuckers laugh at everything I say. It's hurtful. I used to have a therapist, but she moved to England and she won't return my calls. <laughs> Bitch. It's cool, though. I don't have to pay child support to her, but it still makes me angry. My little investments. I used to do a lot of cocaine in Alaska, which explains why I have five children. I know that doesn't sound like good parenting, but it's a fact. <laughs> if it's dark outside for nine months out of the year and it's 40 below zero when you're inside, you're fucking something. That's why you keep your dogs outside. You give them hay. You give them hay. You know, they, they could burrow. You know, but make sure that everybody in your family has their own fucking bedroom. That's all I'm saying. Like, like if I learned anything from my sister aunt, oh. who might be related to Jacob's grandma, I don't know. It's been a weird fucking night, dude. I've been trying to think of a way to do a wall of death for comedy. I don't know how that would work, man. I, I, I'm going to figure it out one day. Like, all right, I want this side of the room. And, on the count of three, buddy, buy me Jägermeister. <laughs> I relapsed on weed. I'm fucking stoned all the time now. I'm just kidding. I only do it at night when I'm taking my foaming bath. I don't take bubble baths. I'm a metalhead. <laughs> then my stupid friend informed me that, you know, foam is just a bunch of little bubbles and we're not friends anymore. Fuck her. She's stupid and I hate her. <laughs> you don't have to be funny to do comedy. You know that, right? Just look at me. I look like a rat if you used to smoke crack in the 90s and... Then met some dude named Joe Rogers who was funnier than the other guy running comedy at the time and I was drunk on Jägermeister and then he invited me to his carport and I don't remember what happened that night. I do know enough about roofies to know what they taste like when you burp them up, but it's fine. It's fine. I respect that man more than most humans and you should hear what I say about you fuckers. <laughs> Use your fucking turn signals in that little thing in the line at the fucking Winco that separates your tampons from my fucking chicken strips, okay? <laughs> That's how we keep society together, right there. It's that simple. You know, wave at somebody when you cut them off. Fucking don't dress like a nun. And I, when am I going to get invited to this, this quesadino party or whatever you're always talking about? Is there chicken quesadillos? I don't get it. Oh, is that you lighting me? Yeah. I notice when you run the light, you point it anywhere but at the person performing. There's a bug attacking me. Ah, little fucker. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to be happy. That's my newest kick. I'm like, no matter what, I'm going to be happy, which is why I look like a crazy person walking down the street. I'm fucking happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. So that's about my end with you. should all just try to be happy all the time. And uh, if you like metal music, you should come to the Manette on November 9th and see my band, Destroy. Fucking yeah. the Manette. By destroy, I mean metaphorically, of course. Please don't break the place. I'm pretty sure we'd have to pay for that. Yet, yeah, Phil, you're not invited. Okay, you all have a good night. And uh, give it up for everybody being funny. Ha ha, tip your bartender and call your mom because she told me she misses you last night. One more time for Raw, you guys. Yeah. You can't save a soul if you don't have one, am I right? Yeah. All right, put your hands together for your next comedian coming to the stage. We got Alex Poli. What the hell? Hey. Hey. You're a nut. <laughs> Sacrilege. <laughs> uh, what's up? Uh, the other day I had to call my trash utility company, Waste Management, and after the call they go, thank you for calling Waste Management. I'm like, all right, um, yeah, no problem. Um, they're like, yeah, thank you for being a loyal customer. I'm like, all right, um, yeah, I definitely didn't pick you as a trash company because you're the only trash company in my county. Um, I like your color scheme, your green trucks. But all, color, or, um, all utility companies are pretty much the same thing, right? They're like pretty much monopolizing our neighborhoods since like 1776. It's a history joke. 
<laughs> I thought I saw some Republicans walking in here. Um, but yeah, anyway, the biggest one, I have, a, I have a bone to pick with Xfinity, like the internet provider. Um, I think their motto should be like, uh, working hard to make sure our customers can never contact us. Yeah, if you ever an issue with your internet, good luck trying to call them. If you ever, like your bill goes up for some reason, good luck trying to find a phone number. It's not on their website. No, you gotta download their clunky ass app that's gonna have you reset your password five times. And, and then you're gonna have to um, spam the word phone in their little virtual assistant chat bot. And then when they finally give you a phone number, the first thing the automated message is gonna say is, hey, did you know we have an app? <laughs> yeah, no shit. And then they're gonna send you on a quest through 97 different pre-recorded uh, menus. And uh, by the way, I think that's for design. I think at one point they sat down and they found like a perfect conversion, like for every pre-recorded message added, X amount of people say fuck it and hang up. And now they like figured out the perfect amount of uh, messages to, to throw in there. By the time it gets the representative, only like the lunatics are left. So they actually gotta pick those up because it's like a safety issue. Um, <laughs> And then whenever you're calling them, make sure you have your phone number, credit card number, and your fucking future child social security that's on the account on hand because the fucker will just hang up on you. The machine will fucking hang up on you. After obediently answering its questions for 20 minutes, it has the audacity to just drop the line on you. I don't know, something about a machine hanging up on you. But, but you learn, right? You learn. You're smarter. You learn that you shouldn't just answer the question. You should just scream the word representative before it tries to get a word out. And then, and it's recording everything you're saying, right? Uh, so if we kind of flip the tables, imagine now you, you are the representative, the, the customer service representative that works at Xfinity um, in some foreign country for like a nickel per hour. Um, and you're about to, you know, you're reading what the customer, what the person, what the lunatic you're about to help has been saying. You know, it's like representative, <coughs> representative. Representative. Representative, goddamn, listen, hi, this Six Finny Hell can help you. Well, hello, you're always like nice when they finally pick up because you don't hate people. You hate the shitty technology they make. Um, uh, I have, I'm, I'm a pretty normal dude, but I do this uh, weird, weird noise with my body when I meet new people just so I can kind of get to know you and see if I want to keep the conversation going. And this weird noise that I make with my body kind of tells me everything I need to know about you. It, it tells me what kind of childhood did you have, what kind of music do you listen to, your geopolitical uh, views, I, pretty much half of your personality. You guys want to uh, hear that noise? Yeah. All yeah. Right. <clears throat> Oh, wah, ah, ah. <laughs> Any disturbed? All right. The 200 million views on YouTube, I thought. Okay. Um, I'll end with this one. Uh, so me and my wife like to travel a lot, and we have a, we have a dog, and it kind of gets packed in the car. So recently we wanted to increase the space, so we got one of those car topper things. Um, uh, awesome. Changed the commute completely, like way more space. I got one issue with it, though. It's kind of high on the car, so it's hard to, to get the dog in there. But uh, All right, that's all I got. Thank you. One more time for Alex Pauly, guys. I'm sorry to hear about your phone call troubles, man, but you know, uh, one person you can call always. Yeah, right there, up there, guys. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? Come on, let me hear your hands clap. All right, he's the reason why we, we're doing all this right now. He's the godfather of comedy and kids app. Give it up for Joseph Rogers. Man, Alex, I am so sorry, but that's pretty cool. You came up here on a Wednesday night to trauma dump about your service with Xfinity. That's pretty, that's pretty good, man. I, like I should try that sometime. Uh, have you guys heard that with the most recent school shooting, that that now makes school shootings the number two school-related deaths in our country? Yeah, don't worry, though. Student loans is still number one. So, yeah. yeah. Ooh, I hear that student loan debt out there, yeah. Uh, you guys notice how fucked up homeschool kids are? <laughs> Here's the thing about homeschool kids, right? Every time I encounter one, uh, I have to ask the parents if I can touch it first. Like, can I? <laughs> no, not like that. Come on. You're just like, 
interact, you know. They, love, they, they, they like to jump on you and use you as a jungle gym when you're six foot tall. You know, these damn whole school kids have never seen an actual jungle gym. <laughs> But the thing about homeschool kids that fucks me up so much is that they look perfectly normal on the outside. But they are so fucked up on the inside, you know what I'm saying? You get to know them a little bit and you're like, holy shit, who raised you? Oh, your mom? Fuck. Yeah, dad. I should have said dad because mom makes it sound like I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Thanks for agreeing with me. That wasn't a pre-written joke, so I didn't plan on saying mom or dad. Should have said creepy uncle. That's the best feminist answer. Creepy uncle. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, isn't it weird when you see friends that uh, hook up and find uh, somebody that they look a lot alike? Isn't that weird when you see that, like on your Facebook, when one of your friends finds somebody that they're, they're in love with, and you're like, holy shit, they look a lot alike. They should probably get a test, right? <laughs> And you know they don't. And then their kid comes out all fucked up. And you're just like, oh, damn. I knew it. You guys are related. For sure. Okay. So kids coming out fucked up, not funny in Bremerton. Okay, I'll remember that one. (laughs) Raise them fucked up? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, too close to home? Yeah, fuck it. Someone in here lost a little brother or sister from... Jeans are weird, bro. Jeans are weird. What gets passed down? Fucking... Who knows, man? I wish I was born with two dicks every day. I'm like, genetically, it's possible, I bet. We're going to have that technology one day to be born with two dicks, and we're going to gift all these men with two dicks. And Yeah, they're <laughs> fucking two dicks joke. Don't do it, Joe. <laughs> Once again, not planned. <laughs> I told somebody one time, I was like, I want to bust a nut farther. And they're like, you need an extra prostate for that. And I was like, what? Prostate? How about if I just get a longer dick? Wouldn't that work, right? Okay, enough of the dick jokes. All right. (laughs) I handcrafted those dick jokes for you, Remedy, okay? Shit. So I'm going to do 30 minutes on Saturday in Elma at a sold-out show with Thomas Friday. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm going to shit the bed so hard in Elma. It's going to be so fun. I'm going to love every bit of it. It's going to be great. 30 minutes, I'm going to try to plan for 10. (laughs) But I will talk about my first fight ever. Uh, At age 43, I got into my first fight. Yeah, shit was wild, right, man? Fucking. You know, here's the thing about the fight, right? Uh, It was at 11.45 in the morning. I was holding my coffee in one hand and I was walking my dog in the other hand. I had my pajamas on. I am not in a position to get in a fight with somebody. Do you guys have any guesses on who I got in a fight with? Old lady. Old lady, what? (laughs) That's the impression you get of me after watching my set? Okay, I can see why you thought old lady, never mind. Because you survived. Because I survived? (laughs) You think I can't handle myself, bro? Shit. I mean, I'm, I'm... I'm not prison material. Well, I mean, I guess I am to some people. I don't know. It's always weird to me. Are you or are you not prison material? I don't know. I look like... I feel like I'm prison material, right? Someone will want to fuck me, for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, no, my neighbor. My neighbor wanted to fight me. And so he came over to my yard and took off his shirt. And I was like, oh, it's going down, right? So I went to go punch him in the face, and he kind of blocked it. And then I went to go punch him in the face again, and he blocked it again. And I was like, I've never been in a fight, but I know what to do next. So I kicked him in the knee, and then I punched him in the face flush. It landed so perfect on his face. And then he kind of like got rocked a little bit, and then he went in for a takedown. And when he went in for a takedown, he wrapped his arms around me, but I kneed him in the face on the way in, right? And he ended up getting his hands around me, pulled my pajama pants down, and my dick flew out. So, yeah. His wife was recording the whole thing. Yeah. Did you guys know that when you get in a fight, shrinkage is a thing? Did you guys know that? I have to say that in case the video comes out on X or whatever it comes out on, you know. Uh, You know, the thing is, though, is that uh, 
the the best part of it all was that when he went to take me down and take my pants down, my dick flew out. It did tap him on the forehead. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know how hard I punch, but I know how hard I dick slap. Okay. <laughs> Because he has not looked at me since. So I was like, yeah, he definitely felt that one. <laughs> I think I won the fight. My son, he go, I told my son about it, and he goes, oh, man, sorry, Dad, I wish I could have been there. I was like, oh, son, don't worry about it. It's not your fight. It's my fight. He goes, no, I don't want to fight. I just want to watch two out-of-shape old white guys beat each other up. I was like, oh, damn, that's racist, son. What the fuck? All right, everybody, love you. Good night. One more time for Joe, you guys. Yeah. Joe, I'm going to need you to say uh, three Hail Marys for every dick joke you just said. Yeah. All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. Come to the stage, we got Derek Logan. Hey. Yeah, so the other day, Someone told me I look like a member of the Duck Dynasty family that they don't talk to anymore. Because every time they handed me a duck call, I just smoked weed out of it. Anyone else get turned on by car washes? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you get it. You get it. It's like, it's like a reverse porn, you know? You know, it sprays all over you in the, in the beginning, and then it blows you at the end. You know, you go to one of those fancy ones, you can't even get a rim job. You know, and, and halfway through it, it spanks your car. You know those little arms that come down and, and like rub the soap all over your car? Well, while it's going through, it gives you a little bumper, a tap. Like it's saying, ooh, you're a dirty little Prius. I see how wet you are right now. You like this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I never thought that a car wash could be an erotic experience, but... Here I am blasting my in windshield from the inside. <laughs> Wax on, jack off, am I right? <laughs> uh, I don't want to get too political out here, guys. Um, you know, I'm still pretty new to comedy. So uh, here's two minutes on Gaza. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Not about to have a Hinchcliffe moment. <laughs> uh, I've... Uh, I've been working a lot of overtime recently, guys, or as I like to call it, uh, micro-dosing sleep, <laughs> or macro-dosing depression. Oh, yeah. So depressed, I might as well be boofing it at this point. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've been pretty depressed recently, guys, but it's, it's, it's okay, all right? As you can see, I have clearly eaten my way through it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of hockey. Yeah, I, I love hockey. I, I guess you could say I like my athletes like I like my women. Toothless. Uh, I, I recently did one of those 23andMe DNA tests, and I found out that I have DNA from settlers of Arkansas. You know, and I thought that was pretty cool, you know? And, and I think it's pretty cool that with all the modern advances in today's technology, you can take your DNA map and your family tree and see exactly when and where the incest started. <laughs> yeah, remember, remember Joe's friend he was talking about? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I recently found out that uh, death by firing squad is still legal in four states. Like, there's four states where right now today you could get sentenced to death by firing squad. I thought that was pretty crazy, so I looked it up, and I found out the way they do it, it's actually pretty respectful. You know, and it, and it honors our culture as Americans. They do it in a high school classroom. Okay, it's, it's a real hands-on day in social studies. Okay, it's a pop quiz you're never going to forget. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A pop, 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 pop. See you behind the corner. Pop quiz. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> I, uh, I, I 
found out the other day, I, I was just looking up some random facts, and I found out that the gene that determines the size of your penis is passed down from the mother. I always knew my mom had small dick energy. <laughs> All right, guys, one more thing before I go. Uh, I, I like to listen to a lot of The Weeknd. Okay, yeah, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, and he has a song called High For This. And the chorus of that song goes, even though you don't roll, trust me, girl, you want to be high for this. And I tell women the same thing. <laughs> Not because I'm confident of what I do in the bedroom, no, no. I'm just a nice guy, and I want them to enjoy some part of the next 90 seconds. <laughs> and I'm going to say 90 seconds because it sounds longer. All right? It's the same reason I measure in centimeters. <laughs> Seven sounds way better than three. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I got. Thanks. And that's how it's done, guys. One more time for Derek. All right, you guys ready for your last comedian of the night? Yeah, put your hands together for Shelby Dodson. What does CTE stand for? I can't remember. Okay, great start. Um, I bought a geek bar for a minor on accident. Does that make me a child vapist? Okay. It's going to get worse, guys. So one time I was hooking up with this woman. And she went down on me. I came in her mouth. She was like, oh, you smoke menthols. And I was like, tell me more, gypsy woman. <laughs> Fucking cum saw my eh? When am I going to die? One time I came home from work and my girlfriend had shaved her head. Not that big of a problem. She just liked getting her hair pulled during sex, so I didn't know what to do next time we fucked. So I just put her in a headlock and gave her a nuggie. A few months ago, I hooked up with an autistic girl. I couldn't tell she was autistic until she accurately guessed the amount of sperm cells I left in her belly button. <laughs> Kidding, it was an Audi. Chris Farley's death would have been hilarious to watch. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Am I right? No. I'm... So, like, I'm really bad at dating. I'm good at getting a first date and really bad at getting a second date. And a little bit ago, I was on, the, on this date with a girl... I took her to this really fancy restaurant, and she was like, tell me, and I, <laughs> I got like a phone bill deep in dollar margaritas. <laughs> and she was like, tell me I'm the prettiest woman in the world. I was like, you're not even the prettiest girl in this Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> My wrist hurts, I'm very lonely. <laughs> I love basketball, it's my favorite sport. I love basketball. Um, a big Thunder fan, fuck you, Sonics. And uh, I like watching Orlando Magic games because there's a guy on the team named Anthony Black. And I like the commentary because, like, oh, Black with the rebound. And I'm like, which one? <laughs> I watch the NBA. The games always start late. I'm not wrong. <laughs> so I'm half Nazi. Yeah, one half of my family fled, Ger fled Germany during World War II, and the other half fled Germany after World War II, which means I have some relatives in Argentina. Yeah, have you guys heard of Gave Gadar? I have a really good Oy Vedar. There's two Jews in here tonight. Two and a half. All right. Uh, there's a Bible-themed uh, there's a Bible-themed theme park in Kentucky. All the signs in front of the roller coaster say, "Thou shalt be this tall to ride." <laughs> Am I right? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> name. Yeah, I know it didn't. 
How many people in here shit their pants tonight? That's an inside joke. Actually, it's an outside joke if you know the story. I hate grunge music. I hate grunge music. That's what you get for talking shit, dude. I hate grunge music. To me, it's, it's like... It always sounds like the lead singer is trying not to puke. Which I wouldn't want to throw up either if all of my friends died choking on their own vomit. Hey, that joke kills in Seattle. Yeah, we'd all be wearing plaid if Kurt Cobain had a fucking gag reflex. Yeah. So I'm going to end on this one. It's a joke I haven't been able to memorize for some reason, probably by alcoholism. I've been an alcoholic for 20 years. My body's starting to break down. It's really gross. Like, my shit is black and my piss is orange, which would make looking in the toilet pretty fucking cool if I like tigers, but I don't. <laughs> so I saw an article... <laughs> Am I right? No. So I saw an article about streaming audience that said, in polls that in the age group 2 to 11, that 22% of what they watch on Netflix is Netflix original programming. How the fuck do you pull a two-year-old? Do you hit up a two-year-old and ask, what do you think of Black Mirror? What's a two-year-old going to say? Well, you see, the underlying message in Black Mirror is how we as a modern society are too reliant on technology and broadcast too much of our lives to the entire world and how one thing can go wrong by either your fault or no fault of your own. It can completely ruin our lives due to circumstances we have yet to foresee because of the rapid advancement in our reference. Our reliance on it gives us no time to fully comprehend what we're doing to ourselves because the accelerated evolution on how we socialize in the past 10 years has been a much larger jump than the entire century before. Now, if you excuse me, I just shit my pants and needed to cry. Right. So I read online that a high caffeine intake can prevent you from having children. <clears throat> a high caffeine intake can prevent you from having children. And I'm not ready for kids. Obviously. So I chugged an entire pot of coffee at once and I shit myself and nobody wanted to fuck me. That's an outside joke. <laughs> and that's how it's done. Yeah. Put your hands together for all the comedians you guys seen tonight. Woo! Put your hands together for Remedy Speakeasy for having us. What? Announce it. What? What you just saw? The TV. The what? The, the Dodgers just won? Yeah. Dodgers just won, guys. Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be bringing around the tip jar. Uh, if anyone wants to donate, this is how I get paid. This is how you guys don't go to hell. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Join your cult.